Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and we're starting a new series today on consumer arithmetic. Thank you so much for joining me. And today's video is an introduction to percentages. In this particular video, you're going to find out what a percentage is, how to change a percentage into a fraction and back again, how to change a percentage into a decimal and back again, and how to find a percentage of an amount. And this is part of our Australian curriculum for Year 7 Maths, and it also gets revised again in Year 8. But it's really important if you're in senior years of Maths, 9, 10, 11 and 12, to be able to understand these concepts because they do form an important foundation for work you're going to be doing in those senior years. So let's get started and talk about what a percentage is. A percentage is a number expressed out of 100. In fact, the word cent comes from the Latin meaning 100. And you've probably seen that in words like centipede, which is an insect with supposedly 100 legs, centimetre and century, where there's 100 years. We use a special symbol to indicate that we are talking about a percentage, not a number. Now, without this symbol, a 25% off sale could mean anything. If it was just 25 off, people would be confused. Would that mean $25 off or 25 cents off? Or would it mean 25 cents in every 100 cents, which is a dollar? And that's what a percent is, 25 cents in every dollar. You'll have heard terms before like give 100% of your effort. And 100% is actually equal to 100 out of 100, which means all of your effort. And you've probably also heard terms like care factor, 0%. 0% means naught out of 100, which means you have no care at all. Now that we have an idea of what a percentage is, let's do some worked examples with them. And our first worked example today is going to be changing a percentage into a fraction. We're going to change 17% into a fraction. Now, firstly, you need to remember that a percentage is a number out of 100. So I'm going to put here um, this little bar here, it's called a vinculum, and that's going to be our uh, starting for our fraction. We're going to take the number 17, that's going to be the numerator of the fraction. You'll remember that from primary school, that means it goes on top. And our next step is we're going to then make our denominator, which is the bottom part of the fraction, 100. So now we've turned 17% into a fraction. Now, it's also important to think about whether you can simplify this kind of fraction. Now, we know 17 is a prime number, but the question is, does 17 go evenly into 100? And the answer is no. There's no common factors between 17 and 100, so we can't simplify this fraction. And that's how we turn a percentage into a fraction. Let's turn 36% into a fraction. So first of all, I'm going to take that number 36 from the percentage. I'm going to make that my numerator. It's going to go on the top of the fraction. Step two is I'm going to make my denominator 100 because it's a fraction out of 100. And my third step is asking myself, can I simplify? Well, 36 is an even number and 100 is an even number. So yes, I can simplify this fraction and I need to do that. But just thinking that they're both even numbers is not enough. I need to think a little bit deeper and try and work out what is the highest common factor, the HCF. So looking at both of the numbers, 36 and 100, and this is where knowing your times tables is really important. I know that the highest common factor is 4. It goes into 36 9 times and into 125 times. So learn your times tables. Step 5, we're now going to break the numerator and the denominator into products. Products meaning times functions using the highest common factor. I'll show you what that looks like. We know 36 is equal to 9 times 4 and 100 is equal to 25 times 4. So if we break those numbers, 36 and 100, up into products using that highest common factor, it makes it very easy to do some cancelling. So now that's what I'm actually going to do. Cancel out that highest common factor. 4 divided by 4 is equal to 1, so that makes it possible for me to cancel that out. And now I have a simplified fraction for 36 out of 100. It's 9 over 25 or 9 25ths. So now I've changed my percentage into a fraction. Let's go backwards and change a fraction now into a percentage. We're going to change 1 fifth into a percentage. So remember that percentages are a fraction out of 100. It's a way of expressing that with a percentage symbol. Our first method is we can make an equivalent fraction and you would have done making equivalent fractions in grade 6 and grade 7. So first of all you ask yourself the question how many times does 5 divide into 100 and the answer of course is 20. 20 times 5 is 100. So we now can make 
um, an equivalent fraction by multiplying one fifth by 20 over 20. Now recall that 20 divided by 20, anything divided by itself is equal to one. So we're not really changing one fifth as such because we're multiplying it by one. And anything multiplied by one remains the same number. But we're changing the form of that number one into 20 over 20, which will give us an equivalent fraction, which is our percentage. So if I do that, 1 fifth times 20 over 20, and this is where it's important that you know how to multiply fractions. We multiply the numerators and then we multiply the denominators. So 1 times 20 gives us 20, 5 times 20 gives us 100. So now we've got an equivalent fraction of 20 over 100. It's still a fraction though, it's not a percentage yet. So our next step is we take just the numerator, which is 20, that becomes our percentage and then we add the percentage symbol to that to the end and we end up with 20%. There's also a second way that we could do this without using fractions on paper. And if you're in senior years, you're probably going to want to use a shortcut. Now, the first thing that you need to remember is that our vinculum, which is that straight line between the one and the five, means divide. So it actually is an operation, one divided by five. If I had two thirds, for example, that would mean two divided by three. So using our calculator, we're gonna jump out here now. I can simply do one and press the divided by number on my calculator, divided by five and press the equals button. Now that's actually changed my fraction into a decimal, which is not what I wanted to do. I wanted to change it into a percentage. Now if I multiply this now by 100 and press the equals button, it gives me the number 20. That is my percentage. But when I write down my answer, I do need to make sure that I add the percentage symbol to my final answer. Let's look at our next worked example, changing a percentage into a decimal. Firstly, we're going to change 12% into a decimal. And we're going to remember again that a percentage is a fraction out of 100. And we know how to work between fractions and decimals, so that makes it a little bit easier for us. So we're going to do it this one by moving the decimal place. And you would have learned how to do this in grade 7. So firstly, we're going to take that percentage symbol away from the number 12 and we're going to add that decimal place where it belongs after the number 2. Our second step is we're going to be dividing by 100. Now if you remember that each of these place values, um, we have in the, the, one, the tens column we've got the number 1, in the units column we've got number 2, and for all of our tens, hundreds, thousands and so on, we've got 0 at the moment. Now we're going to be dividing the number 12, so that means 12 is going to become much smaller. If we were to move the decimal point to the right, we'd be inserting zeros and making 12 into a bigger number. That's not what we want to do. We want to change it into a decimal. So we're going to move that decimal place to the left twice. So my first move changes it to 1.2. My second change moves that to 0.12. So I'm not quite finished yet. I've moved that decimal place twice because I've divided. My third step is I'm gonna add a zero in that ones place to complete my answer, 0 0.12. And now I've changed 12% into a decimal. There is another way of doing this as well, not just moving decimal points. And once again, we're recalling that that vinculum means divide. So we're gonna actually do this again on our calculators. So let's jump out to the calculator and clear off our screen from before, we're actually going to type 12 onto our calculator. It's 12%, which means 12 out of 100. That's why I was re reminding you that the vinculum means divide, 12 divided by 100, and then press our equals button, and we're actually done right away, 0.12. We're on to our fifth example, powering through these today. We're going to change a decimal into a percentage, so we're going to go in the other direction. We've been given the decimal 0.325, let's make that into a percentage. Now, method one, we're gonna do the same thing we did with our previous question. We're gonna move the decimal place. Now you recall when we went from percentage to decimal, we divided by 100. We're gonna go in the other direction this time because we're going back from a decimal into a percentage. So we're gonna move that to the right two places, which is the equivalent of multiplying that decimal by 100. So firstly, I've got 0 0.325 with my first move, that moves the decimal place to 3.25, and my second move moves at 32.5. I've still got that zero on the front, which I actually don't need. So I'm gonna take that zero away, and then I'm gonna pop my percentage symbol in, and I am done once again. There is another way of doing this with the calculator. So let's jump back out to the calculator again. So I'm gonna clear my screen from the previous example, 0. 
three, two, five is the decimal I want to change into a percentage. Now I need to multiply that by 100 and press the equals button, 32.5%. Don't forget to add the percentage symbol to your final answer. Okay, viewers, we're on the home stretch now. We're going to find percentages of an amount, and this is something you're going to do a lot in real life. We're going to find 30% of $200. So firstly, I'm going to change that percentage to a fraction. We've just learned how to do that. It's a fraction out of 100, 30 out of 100. Now, you could make things a little bit easier for yourself down the track, and you could simplify this right here to 3 tenths, but I'll just leave it as 30 out of 100 for the moment. Secondly, I'm going to multiply 30 over 100 by the amount I've got. Because if you look back at the question, 30% of 200, that word of always indicates to us multiplication times. So I'm going to be doing 30 over 100 times 200. Now the reason why I changed the 200 into a fraction over 1 is it's so much easier to multiply a fraction by a fraction instead of a fraction by a whole number. So I'm simply now going to do 30 over 100 times 200 over 1. Now our rule for multiplying two fractions is we multiply the numerators and then we multiply the denominators. But we're going to end up with some pretty big numbers if we do that. 30 times 200 is a big number and 100 times 1 is a biggish number. So we're actually going to make this a little bit simpler before we get started by doing some cancelling. So firstly, if you look at this, we've got two zeros on the bottom and we've got two zeros on the top. Those two zeros can cancel out with one another because anything divided by itself gives you the answer of 1. So if I cancel those out, then what I've effectively done is saying that 30 times 2 times 1. Okay, so I'm left with 30 times 2 on my numerator and I'm left with 1 times 1 on the denominator. I can simplify that a little bit further. It's 60. So I need to have a little bit of a think about this. 30% of $200, the answer was 60. Now I need to work out what unit of measurement I'm going to put with the 60. I found a fraction or a percentage of an amount of money. So my final answer is going to be a fraction of that original amount. It's going to be money as well. So my final answer is going to be presented in dollars, $60. Well, that's all we have time for today. I'm so glad you stay with me all the way to the end. We've got lots of videos coming up in this series and it's gonna take students all the way through to grade 11 and 12. So we're gonna learn in our next video how to increase and decrease amounts by percentages. And in my experience, even senior students struggle with this one. So it's really important that you stay tuned for that one. We're gonna learn about best buys, simple interest, which is something that you'll be doing all the way into year 11 and 12. Wages and salaries, budgets, markups and discounts, profits and loss, goods and services tax, which is something that is covered in both accounting and business as well as mathematics. We're going to look at exchange rates and dividends, which is something that even adults find very useful. And something that's important to note, if you're looking for something on compound interest in this series, we've actually got that covered in our loans and investments playlist. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Welcome to all the new subscribers to the channel. Please feel free to leave a comment if you're finding the videos helpful. Feel free to email us here or even follow us on Facebook if you'd like to comment on something or even request a type of video for the future. Have a wonderful day and thanks for joining us at McClutchy Maths.